So with this now inclusion of Absolute Superman, we now finally complete the DC's trinity of all different and all new superhero origins. Because just like with Absolute Batman and Absolute Wonder Woman, Absolute Superman takes everything about Superman and flips it on its head, changing everything completely. So of course, naturally, we start off on Krypton. Krypton in the recent past. And now this Krypton is very different, but very interesting. Because while yes, it still has that crystallized look a lot of Kryptons have, this one is a lot more dark and sinister looking. No doubt an influence from Darkseid himself, as he did create this entire universe from the events of DC All In, but in short, this Darkseid created universe, everything is twisted compared to the prime DC Earth. But also like most versions of Krypton, the planet is still being abused and ran dry by the ruling or science league class of Krypton, because in their pursuit of science and furthering Krypton, they run the planet dry of its resources, no matter the cost, all in the name of progress. They were the most veneered minds on the planet, but two very interesting people weren't a part of them. No, here in the Absolute Universe, Superman's parents, Jor-El and Lara, are actually farmers on Krypton, which of course is usually a role that his Earth parents, the Kents, play. Instead, we also see here on Krypton, his parents are hardworking farmers. Another thing that is pretty interesting and frankly weird, we learn a bit about the lore of Krypton. How Lara, Superman's mother, wanted to be an astronaut. But Krypton, for whatever reason, shifted its focus and funds from space exploration to harnessing and using the resources on a planet which is kind of backwards. And Superman's father, Jor-El, also being equally as smart and gifted as his mother, he makes the observation that Krypton has always been a tough old ball of sunbeat dirt, but these days it's like something is wrong with the planet. How even the basic necessity of water and rain is hard to come by. And you might be saying, okay, why are these two great minds here just stuck doing manual labor on a farm? Well, because the science league and ruling class of Krypton has a firm grip on the politics and actual sayings of what goes on on Krypton. Because if you are even any bit of critical and give criticism to their workings and how they proceed with their actions, you are dumped and shipped to bottom tier dwellings. As example, his parents here are part of the labor guild, which of course is explained by the symbols on their chest, clothes, and other markings. The science league rocking some sort of sun design on all of their materials. Whereas the bottom tier, the labor guild, they are represented by the iconic and classic Superman shield and crest which of course in the main prime DC universe was a house of L symbol. You know, the one on Superman's costume. And here it's usually seen as a mark of shame, representing the poor and working class of Krypton. But Superman's parents, his family wore it with pride because a part of this guild, they can create and affect real hands-on change on Krypton. As we see Jor-El lead an exploration into a dangerous mine shaft to check as he is an engineer. And as this book goes on to say, the planet is rotting from the inside out. And like I said before, he is a farmer and an engineer, but he is a very intelligent one. Because when nobody else believes him that something is wrong with the planet itself, deep inside the mine shaft, suddenly everything starts to shake and rumble. Because it is almost like Krypton itself is dying slowly. As we see evidence of this, when multiple giant spouts of green glowing liquid come gushing out of the ground like an acid burning and disintegrating everything that it touches, from the machines and structures within the mine down to the people itself. And as you may think, this is Krypton's kryptonite. No, not radioactive pieces of Krypton when it explodes, but already part of the misused and abused Krypton now, which might serve to be its ultimate undoing. The greatest weakness of Superman may also become the greatest weakness of his people in Homeworld too. And you might even be asking yourself, okay, where is Superman in all of this? Where is Kal-El? Well, for us, his story doesn't even start here. It starts millions of light years away on a different side of the universe on Earth. And no, not in Kansas or Smallville, because that would be too unoriginal. More of the same. No, in this absolute universe, everything is different as we pick up in Brazil. And on this absolute Earth's Brazil, a couple crazy things are happening. Crazy, but not so unfamiliar. As we see, again, something happening in a mine. A group of workers, the poor and overworked residents in the slums of Brazil, are being wronged against and forced to mine diamonds. Forced by who? Well, the Lazarus Corporation, a group on Earth who seemingly own and rule over everything. But we also see that the story and chain of events are narrated by Kal-El himself, as he goes on to say how he is well aware of the evil things going on in the mine, just how it is across multiple places on Earth that he has traveled to and seen himself personally. And this is all happening because the Lazarus Corporation, 
They have a monopoly on most industries and use it to abuse people to further their goals. In this case, forcing the miners and keeping their families hostage until they complete their task and find the special diamonds. And they enforce this by having the muscle of the Lazarus Corp, a group of beings called the Peacemakers, heavily armed and trained soldiers resembling, well, Peacemaker. They are kind of like the stormtroopers of the Lazarus Corporation, they're foot soldiers. But as we do see the workers of the mine try to go back and are forced to work in the hazardous and frankly deadly conditions of the mine, they are very surprised to see that someone has beat them. Some mysterious person found the ore and refined it into diamonds already, making their jobs not only that much easier, but also potentially saving some lives. Because with the ore already refined into diamonds, all the miners have to do is simply take the loot and turn it in without slaving away in these harsh conditions. And as they do that, of course, different problems arise because the peacemakers make note of how it is almost impossible how they are out already in such a short amount of time with the mined diamonds. But for us, we get a clue of who might have even done such a thing as we cut over to the night before, where we see the leader of the miners, Joao the afro-haired individual, meet with a mysterious and, frankly, very interesting individual, Kal-El, Superman. And we see their first interaction with each other, because this absolute Superman here is portrayed as a sort of lone wanderer, questioning everything, seeking answers type character. And in a conversation with Joao, Superman goes on to say, I have seen the wonders of your world. World. And I have seen a lot of places just like this, industries that run on suffering. How do you know what is truth and what is right? With Joao simply saying, you know when you have what is worth fighting for, that is truth. With Superman simply responding, and what if you have nothing? But before he can further question this line of thought, he then makes his departure, telling Joao thank you for giving him something to think and ponder about. Because right now Superman is kind of lost, looking for purpose and looking for truth in a completely different environment and world than what he grew up on. Krypton. But moving back onto present time, we see, well, the peacemakers didn't take kindly to something being out of their control and a question they need answering. As they go to beat down the workers, questioning who gave them the diamonds and why are they breaking the peace. And as one of the peacemaker guards goes to threaten Joao's life, literally putting a blade to his neck, suddenly he is saved as someone else says, all the workers have been accounted for, all except one. As we see Kal-El, in one of the homes in some sort of recharging station. But of course, the peacemakers know this and they're on their way to try and capture who this mysterious individual is. But before the peacemakers are able to arrive, we see the thing that Superman is sleeping inside of is some sort of highly intelligent suit, an entity named Soul, which is kind of interesting that Superman needs this specialized suit or program, if you will, inferring two things. One, maybe his special power set isn't the same as it normally would. And two, it further goes a alienate himself and show you how he is a trespasser on earth, needing a special kind of astronaut suit if you will to even be on earth and do what he does. But eventually a mini peacemaker army does arrive, telling everybody to evacuate as they close in on Superman's location. As Kal-El goes on to further narrate saying years of running all across the planet, always misery, always Lazarus, except this time I have left myself weak and sun starved, dreaming of a time so long ago when I still knew who I was. Cal L, as his suit wakes him up just in time as the peacemakers invade. But like he said before, Superman is not at his A game. He isn't at his most powerful because he has been purposely leaving himself sun starved in a weakened state because that's when he feels most alive and can dream of times long ago relive some memories, which isn't going to help him here as a giant battle breaks out. Superman absolutely decimating this peacemaker forces, because as he continues to destroy everything, he goes on to say, maybe it is for the best that I haven't already left. Because after years of watching these people treat the poorest and lowest among them little more than cattle and animals, I've gotten tired of running. As we finally see in full this new absolute Superman suit, and in my opinion, even though I don't think it holds a candle to the iconic and original Superman suit, I still think it's pretty cool and pretty different. The first thing you can notice is that he doesn't have a cape, along with the all black and orange highlights. The orange highlight on his wrist and legs seem to be glowing with power, hinting that maybe this Superman has a different sort of abilities, but we will soon see that later on. And as he continues to fight through and battle these peacemaker forces, his suit has some sort of onboard AI, similar to a Iron Man suit in Jarvis. And this artificial intelligence goes on to explain to Kal-El how like the other Lazarus forces they have encountered, their weapons and armor incorporate technology not even native to this galaxy. And how Superman's quest to help these wronged people and do good, the suit kind of thinks that it's a worthless endeavor because on this planet full of combustion engines, thermonuclear weapons, these people are never safe. And neither is Kal-El if he insists on exerting himself like this, fighting especially with his solar energies quite depleted. But Superman goes on to make the argument that the workers are in danger and it is mainly his fault. All he ever did was try to help, but at least in this instant he made it kind of worse. But we do see him finally clear up the battlefield using what seems
seems to be his super speed or some sort of different ability, going fast and taking out all of the rest of the soldiers in a blink of an eye and helping the rest of the workers find safety. Telling them, if Lazarus won't pay, you should take the diamonds to someone who will. But for now, just get everyone out of here. And before he can further help, suddenly he's struck by some sort of electrical or lightning type attack. An attack that he actually feels and hurts him. And we see this is the doing of another special team part of the Lazarus Corporation. And this team is a highly effective specialized group compared to the normal foot soldiers that the peacemakers are. And here, before they arrive on the battlefield, they go over some of the information that they know about this mysterious being. How that the higher ups want him defeated, but alive. And how, yes, he is the same man that was running around before, taking down some of their other locations and groups. With his physical abilities beyond all human scale. Even down to noticing something is up with his suit. As a woman, who by the way, just keep a note on because she becomes really important and interesting towards the end, but she goes on to say, it's the suit. If you look closely, you can see it's shifting, changing shape, like a living armor protecting him. And sometimes I swear he is talking to it. Back down below on the actual battlefield, when Kal-El was struck with that attack, we see that set off something in his body. How suddenly he seems to be losing control, letting all of his pent up solar energy, his power, his essence, let out in one full swoop attack. Almost like a special move, coming out not only from his eyes, but his special gauntlets and other parts of his suit. Pure destructive energy. But like I said before, he can't control it. So yes, while that is a powerful attack, it is seemingly too much and is overwhelming him. As he goes on to tell his suit to shut him down, his suit not only complies, but goes on to say, Cal L, it is my mission to protect you, to guard the last living person of the house of L. So I must urge you once again, do not engage. Do not risk your life for these people. Leave this place. Return to the shadows. You must never forget the lesson of Krypton. Some worlds simply cannot be saved. Not from themselves. As we see this weekend Superman, yes he took out all of the forces, but he is too weak now, and frankly it is just not worth it to continue fighting. As when more Lazarus reinforcements arrive, he does nothing but simply stand there and wait. And before he can do anything to get out of this bad situation, suddenly there is a clamp on his arm. Some sort of handcuff. As we see this person who handcuffed him is none other than Agent Lane. Yes, Lois Lane. The same woman from before that I have mentioned. As she goes on to say that the suspect is in custody. Pointing a weapon at Cal els face, saying, if you move, I fry your face, Superman. So yes, of course, it is Lois Lane in this absolute universe who was the first one to give Cal el his iconic name and moniker, Superman. So yeah, right now it is really not looking good for the Man of Steel. And it might become even worse as moving thousands of miles over towards the Nevada desert, we see a mysterious person who is working with the Lazarus Corp looking over all of the footage of this new Superman. And it seems to be none other than a version of Brainiac. As he says, a scrumptious new toy, wonder where you came from. And no, that is not all as we move over again to the middle of Kansas, where we see the Kent's farm, old, destroyed, and decomposing. But most importantly, we see a sign that says the property of Lazarus. Meaning, yes, it seems like Lazarus has hands all across the world in this absolute universe. From Superman's iconic villain's brainiac, from even down to his landing place and his human family, the Kent's. But of course, we will see what all this means in the next issue as this one comes to a close. So yes, that was the first issue of Absolute Superman. And personally, I think it's way better than Absolute Wonder Woman, but I would still put Absolute Batman slightly higher or on the same tier. What did you guys think about this though? Let me know all in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed the video though, leave a like or subscribe if you're new and want to see more of this type of content. As always, this was the Hero Informer and thank you for watching.